Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano and a chef on a mission. Today's mission is tuna. Let's talk tuna. Tuna is by far one of the most popular fish in the world. Globally, tuna is a phenomenon. It's just amazing how much consumption of tuna is out there and people eat tuna. Tuna is also in the mackerel family. Mackerel is a very popular fish as well. So, what makes certain tuna have more mercury and what makes them less mercury? Let's talk about that, the least and the most mercury contents of tuna. First of all, I like to, to get my studies and my information from ewg.org, environmentalworkinggroup.org, true independent science out there working for the betterment of our lives and, um, and just true independent science. Sometimes when you go on the internet, you'll see, oh, don't eat tuna at all. Eat it once a month. And then some people say, well, it's okay to eat tuna two or three times a week. And is it, you know, so there's so much confusing information about tuna on the market. I'm going to tell you in this short video, what is a difference, different mercury levels in tuna and how it's acquired. First of all, tuna gets its mercury level from how long it's been alive. The longer the fish has been alive, the longer it can bioconcentrate mercury in its system. Tuna stores the mercury in the fat. The fattier the fish gets, the larger the fish gets, the more mercury is in the fish. Plain and simple, cut and dry, that's the that's a general rule. So the tuna at, re, at, at sushi restaurants, the, a lot of these are prized larger catches, especially in Japan. Japan is known for their, their bluefin catches, and these fish are 1,500 pounds large. People, that's the size of a cow or a bull. These, these fish are massive. And these are the prized catches you hear about that go to the markets in Tokyo and fetch a million dollars, and people just love them. But in reality, that fish could be living for 55 years, 60 years. I mean, the fish doesn't reach maturity on something like that till, till 25 years, something like that. So um, people pro people have put these these trophies and these prizes on the worst, on the, on the least healthiest, healthiest items. It seems like that throughout a lot of gourmet food. Um, so let's talk about the different weights and sizes, or different size weights of tuna, so you can sort of get a grasp and sort of chart it out in your mind where you want to eat. So you want to eat tuna that's the smallest tuna possible, that's matured the quickest. Um, so here we go. Here's the rundown. At 150 pounds, you have yellowfin tuna. Yellowfin tuna matures or reaches 55 years in age. Um, it can it can uh, it can live that long. But at yellowfin at 150 pounds is one of the smaller species. There aren't a lot of smaller, smaller species of tuna, but when you go to a sushi restaurant here in America, you're probably gonna be eating something called yellowfin, which is also known as ahi tuna, A-H-I, ahi. Ahi typically is the is the, the trade name, the name that, you're, that people are saying, oh, I want the ahi, the ahi is so delicious. Well, it's actually yellowfin tuna. It's grown up to 150 pounds out in the ocean. It's had many years to sit there and eat other fish and absorb the environment and get loaded with mercury, okay? The next one at uh, about 250 to 280 pounds is big eye tuna. Big eye tuna is also extremely popular. That's taken, again, years and years to mature, and these fish live a long time. Can you imagine a fish that's 250 pounds? That's a large fish. Older it is, the more mercury, the larger it is, the more fat, the more mercury content. Uh, southern bluefin, southern bluefin, just like it said, southern comes from the southern hemisphere. It goes around the whole um, southern part of the globe. That fish can get up to 450 pounds. Again, longer the sh longer it lives, the more fish it eats, the more environmental toxins it takes in, the more fat it gets. The more fat it gets, the more it can store mercury. Mercury is stored in the fat of the animal of, of, of the tuna. And of course, the prized bluefin tuna matures in 25 years and can weigh 1,500 pounds. And this is the most famous tuna. This is a tuna that is being decimated through across across the globe because of its because of its its allure of fishing this this fish and taking it to the to the Japanese markets like Tokyo and fetching a half a million dollars per fish or whatever. It's some ridiculous price these fish. And you have these these sushi tycoons in Japan that actually want to pay because they want the publicity. They're willing to pay a half a million dollars or a million dollars a fish because all that's publicity. They're going to be in every single paper the next day 
so-and-so sushi owner of five, six restaurants buys prize tuna, and that's advertising for them. And then they, they take it and they process it, and they, you, know, you get the smallest, smallest portion for literally like $85 in these restaurants. Um, but again, it's all the hype and the marketing, but what the consumer doesn't know is, or typically doesn't think of as, well, because I'm paying more money for this ex expensive tuna, it's actually, um, I have the most mercury content. I mean, consuming the most mercury content. So mercury is stored in the fat of the fish. The, lar the larger the fish, the more the fat. Now, the tuna that we use at Aroma Time is albacore tuna. Now, there's 48 species, I believe, of tuna, 47 or 57. There's around 50 species of tuna out there. So... Albacore tuna, sometimes to a fisherman, is, is, a, is a generic trade name. It blankets certain, a bunch of different species. But there also is an albacore species of fish. Uh, so the scientific name is going to be whatever it is, albacore tunis or whatever, however you say it in, in, its, in its proper scientific name. So the specific species of albacore tuna, these tuna that we use are, can, uh, range about 25 pounds because that's when, they, that's when they're, they've reached their peak and they can mature and they can reproduce. Now, all albacore tuna is fished differently. The one that we use out of the Pacific Northwest has very strict standards. Pacific Northwest of the U.S. meaning Washington and Oregon State and going up into Vancouver. The only difference in the tuna in Vancouver and Oregon is there's different quotas because you're going from U.S. waters to Canadian waters and there's different quotas or maybe longer season, shorter season. It's the same fish because the fish is swimming back and forth on the borders. So these fish are 25-pound fish just about that that big but they're old enough to reproduce because certain tunas reproduce at a much younger age so these tuna reproduce 25 pounds they're caught at about that same weight and they're caught one hook one line they're called they're pole caught the fish are caught and frozen on the boat immediately negative 40 degrees within an hour two hours of catching them they're processed frozen incidentally frozen fish is extremely extremely popular in sushi restaurants. In fact, by law in many states, you have to have previously frozen fish in sushi restaurants. So don't get mad that I'm saying the word frozen. Frozen is a very popular thing in the industry. We're not you know, freezing fish years ago in the 60s, 70s. You froze fish in a grocery store because the fish wasn't selling. So it was frozen and stuck into a, into a freezer that wasn't that cold. And then the cells would break and it would get watery and, 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 and lose its texture. Sort of like if you did it at home. But if you're buying fish that's frozen at negative 40 degrees, which is how fish should be frozen, and when it's caught right away, the fish is fresher than fresh and the texture is amazing on it. So chances are a lot of people would say, well, I don't eat frozen seafood. You have eaten frozen seafood and you couldn't tell the difference. And if you got fresh seafood that's never been frozen and frozen side by side of the same species, Chances are you'd pick the frozen seafood because the texture is far better, the flavor is far better, and it's a safer fish because it has less microbial count. But back to the tuna. 25 pounds, small fish. Um, if you go to EWG, take a look at their graphs on tuna, uh, mercury levels, because you can look at, you can pull up all kinds of things on Google and be saying, don't eat tuna. Okay, it's okay to eat tuna. And then you look at the drastic different levels of mercury and that's why people, every tuna is different. Every species of tuna is different. In fact, this, the same fish can have different levels of mercury because again, like I said, the mercury builds up in the fat of the fish. Well, if you take a loin cut versus the belly, the belly is loaded with fat. And incidentally, if you like the real expensive sushi, the otoro or the super toro, this is the belly fat. Of the, uh, of the bluefin tuna, that is pure fat. You can take it out of the freezer, basically. I've worked with this at other places. They take it out of the freezer and it's frozen. And you can just start slicing it because it's, it's pure fat, basically. And it's just like butter. It just slices right out of the freezer. And people are thinking, oh my gosh, it's frozen, this and that. And it just shaves and slices and people love it. It melts in your mouth because it's pure fat and that's where the highest concentration of mercury is. Now, every fish obviously has belly, the fish belly, the tuna belly, and that always has much more fat, three, four, even five times the amount of fat versus other pieces of the tuna. So if you're concerned about mercury, if you're concerned about your health, um, then definitely look for smaller species, albacore caught from the Pacific Northwest. You can get albacore from really any part of the globe. You can get it here from Long Island. Long Island catches albacore, but these are much larger fish they catch. It's a different industry. It's a different catch methods. It's different. It's different processing different market so the pacific northwest is known for their very very sustainable smaller weight catches 
of tuna. The whole industry is doing doing the best they possibly can out of out of out of the tuna production areas, uh, tuna catch areas globally. I mean, there's small pockets in maybe Tobago or other places that that are um, that are doing a good job as well. But as far as what they're catching, and the season's only six weeks long, and that's why they're frozen, by the way. Um, they've really made a name for themselves in the Pacific Northwest. There's a whole Pacific Northwest coalition of American tuna tuna catchers out there. You can get on their um, fishermen. You can get on their website and check out and see what they're doing. I spoke to the president of the organization. I'm really, really impressed. I've been using this tuna for years, probably since 1999, 98. I, I found this this tuna and caught on to it right away. So, hope that helps you make a good decision when you're eating tuna. Um, and again, you're going to see the word albacore out there on a lot of things if you keep looking and asking. But keep in mind, you can get, if you like canned tuna, there is Pacific Northwest caught canned tuna, or it's in pouches now. A lot of it's in pouches. They're avoiding cans. Go to something like a Whole Foods um, or a health food store, preferably an independently owned health food store, and you can really see there's some awesome, much, much better, safer tuna products going into cans or into pouches. So if you like your tuna fish salad, that's what you're looking for. Um, I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. If you uh, like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel. If you want to know more about my restaurant, aromatimebistro.com. Check it out. The link is below. And thanks for watching.